Mr. Chairman. I call uh, uh, Mr. Chair Chair to read. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just do want to echo uh, the comments of my colleague uh, Megan Woods. Um, the Parliamentary Commissioner for the Environment has made it very clear that planning for climate change. Uh, and for the infrastructure costs and changes that are needed is absolutely critical for a large, uh, large parts of uh, New Zealand's urban and coastal areas, including in the city where I live, in Dunedin, where there is, South Dunedin is at particular risk of sea level rise, and there are particular infrastructure issues that arise from it being an old city with an old infrastructure. And so there needs to be careful, measured planning um, and the authority to do that planning and the ability to communicate that and then the ability to change the rules where it's needed in order to be able to prepare for the sea level rise that's expected and is already, in our case, affecting uh, large parts of South Dunedin. Now, this is, uh, I'm, I look forward to um, the amendments from uh, my colleague Julianne Genta, who is uh, including climate change into uh, part, the new Part 6 that is proposed by Labor. And the Green Party will be supporting Part 6, and we look forward to support for the amendments that we are making to Part 6. Um, but, sir, beyond the, the climate change aspects uh, that need to be considered, I just want to take it back to a kind of human level, a street level, if you like, approach. Because one of the reasons why I'm so quite supportive of uh, part, part six, uh, despite the concerns around the urban growth boundaries, is that the, on, the rest of this part uh, sets out different, a new kind of way of looking at planning. And that is essential for not just those areas that might be affected by climate change, but actually the reimagining of our cities and towns as places where people love to live, where the things that they need the most, access to decent homes, affordable transport, to green space where they can you know, enjoy um, their communities together, those social community spaces, um, it's safe because there are lots of people around, lots of different kinds of people around, where there is uh, great pedestrian and safe cycling opportunities for families to get to work and to school and to enjoy for recreation. All of these things come out of um, a proper infrastructure system that's been proposed here in Part 6 and proper urban design that allows for people to come together and design their cities the way that they want them to be. So I want to encourage uh, uh, members and members of the public to have a look at the Green Party proposal for reimagining our cities, the Green Cities proposal that we released uh, a month or so ago. And that proposal asks for feedback from the public, from New Zealanders, from people involved in the industry about two things. One is the building code, and we dealt with some of that in part four. But the other is on a national policy statement on urban design. And that, that is what sits on top of the infrastructure um, um, and planning tools that are set out in part six. So you have those planning, we, we pass the part six, and get those planning tools um, right, and then on top of that, we build uh, the, the design the cities and the communities that we know people want to live in. And that includes things like the street design to make it uh, comfortable for people to move around easily from place to place, from home to shop to school to after school events to their theatres uh, to work and back. That's designed around women and children, which is a new approach to urban design where the needs of women and children feature at the centre of urban design. Because actually, the research shows that women travel more as a result of their daily requirements of, of activities. Getting their kids to school, uh, doing all of the, often doing all of the shopping, also getting to work, managing the after school cares. Women's travel and um, city requirements, if you like, are much more complex than men's, it turns out in the research. So let's have urban design that focuses on the needs of women and children to keep them safe and enable them to use their city in the best way possible. Let's make sure that urban design promotes child and pedestrian friendly environments so that we can reduce the risk to children and to pedestrians, but particularly children who are walking to and from school from the hazards of roadways, driveways, where so many accidents occur. So there's a, a really good opportunities here for community spaces that help to build collaboration and connection between communities, rather than the isolation that especially many older New Zealanders are starting to face. 
So as older New Zealanders are facing more and more financial pressure, they are also um, increasingly isolated from their communities and finding it more and more difficult to connect to the people who live... Mr Chair, Mr Chair, Mr Chair. Um, Mr. Dr Chair. David Clark. Mr Chair, 